Good afternoon, everyone. I can see we've got people arriving for my next session. I'm just going to give people a little bit longer to turn up. Hi, Mohammed. Hi, Alia Aliana. Hi, Alia Aliana. Hi, Alia Aliana. Let's get rid of the echo. There we go. So yeah, please ask questions. Um, if you can keep it on the topic, that would be brilliant. And I'm happy to go into as much detail as you would like on any of the slides that I've got to show you today. And um, please also, if, you, if you've got any questions at all, and I'm asking how you've understood what I've, what I've been through, then please, um, please do say, don't, don't be shy. Yes, it does say I'm called Georgia. Uh, there we go, Never mind. I'll be Georgia for this afternoon. Hi there, anyway, Evan, and Undead Gaming, hello. Right, so let's have a look. We've given it a minute, so um, I think some more people will pop up in a little while. Hi, Dee. Hi, GJ. I'm going to get started now. So we're going to be talking about today uh, conservation of energy. And this extends what we did last Monday. I might recap a little bit of what I did last Monday as well. So um, if you're studying physics at A-level or GCSE, um, thank you for that question, Ramin. Um, it's probably quite basic for um, some A-level students, but certainly if you're just starting a course at A-level, it's always good to review the GCSE content. So yeah, would definitely be helpful to do that. Um, but this is aimed at people studying GCSE, AQA, Edexcel and OCR. Um, just a reminder, we don't specifically cover any IGCSE content. So if you've got any IGCSE questions, because their questions and their specifications are a little bit different, you're better off going straight to the, um, the exam board's website for more support on that. Right, we'll get started then. So just to uh, introduce myself. Um, my name's David and I've been a teacher for 16 years, um, GCSE and A-level, and uh, I'm an engineer uh, with a master's degree and a bachelor's degree in engineering and uh, worked in industry before teaching. So having done teaching for 16 years, um, I've got quite a lot of experience about um, what the exam boards are looking for and also pitfalls that students can sometimes fall into. So I'll be talking about those as I go through the slides. Um, hopefully you'll find this topic tonight relatively straightforward, but again, don't be afraid to say if you don't. Um, sometimes it just takes a bit more practice to get there in your understanding. All right. So just a little bit about SNAP Revise. Um, SNAP Revise are offering a tuition service soon. They're going to be offering GCSE tutoring. And if you head on over to the link I'll show you in the next slide, you can have a look at what's on offer. You can have a look at examples of what they do for A-level at the moment, and also get a sneak, some sneak peeks of what's coming up for GCSE students, which is going to include um, four or more classes per week, uh, full curriculums covered for AQA, OCR, Edexcel, Pearson. All of the handouts are provided and professionally produced, including the slides that we use, and you've got access there through that tutoring service to a full library of all the past recordings. Um, hi, Amy. And um, you can also access one-to-one -one support and one-to-one -one tutoring support through that service. Um, people always ask, or did last week certainly, um, how much that's going to cost. Um, it is cheaper than the A-level. It's cheaper than the A-level courses, um, but I can't confirm the exact cost yet. You'll need to head onto the website and uh, sign up for more information. So that's the GCSE tutoring that's coming soon. Hi, Azim. And so another thing to add is there is a competition so if you would like to win uh, an academic year's membership for the GCSE tutoring then please click on the link there and don't forget the slides are available to download uh, my friend and colleague from SNAP Revise will be in the chat telling you that there you go there's the competition link so if you want to win a year's subscription or for the rest of the academic year for the GCSE tutoring head on over to that short URL and um, Put your email in. Uh, D, where do you sign up for more? Oh, okay. Um, perhaps my colleague can um, enlighten you on that one. If there's something that you need to do or anywhere particular you need to go, 
Um, uh, as far as I'm aware, you could go straight to the SNAP Revised website and have a look at what's there now. It could be that the detail of the GCSE content is not up yet, so I'll let my colleague um, follow that one up for you. Okay, so you need to do that by the 15th of February as well. So um, don't forget, if you want to win a free year's or academic year's worth of tutoring, you need to get your skates on. Okay, so the objectives today and please do um, ask questions at any point. I'm monitoring the chat as I'm talking to you. Um, and I don't want to race past anything without making sure you fully understand it. So we're going to be covering um, your understanding of different ways energy can be transferred in a system, um, defining the principle of conservation of energy. And we're going to look at some examples of energy transfers and uh, discuss what's going on in order to determine sources of dissipated energy. Um, energy that is wasted to the surroundings. So I'm not going to cover energy transfer diagrams. Um, what you might be aware of are Sankey diagrams. That's going to come in another session. I'm not going to cover efficiency. So we're looking at understanding energy transfers, principle of conservation of energy, and looking at uh, wasted energy, or better, say, better to say dissipated energy, energy that is lost or dissipated to the surroundings. So a little bit on the specification. I know this is really small, um, but if you download the slides, you'll be able to have a closer look if you would like to. And you can also access these from the various websites of the exam boards as well. Um, the key points I'm just going to highlight on there. Um, you need to understand the energy changes of objects that are being uh, projected upwards, something that you've thrown in the air. Think about what's the energy change going on if you throw a tennis ball up and consider what the energy is doing as it goes up comes to a momentary hold and falls back down again. Um, think about energy changes when something moving hits an obstacle. Um, energy changes in, in an object of mass being accelerated by a constant force. Um, energy changes in a vehicle slowing down. Um, not something that I'm going to specifically address again later, but clearly you think about the kinetic energy of a moving object and how when it's slowing down, that kinetic energy is being converted into other forms of energy. Um, what, what would be the form of energy primarily that or the kinetic energy of a vehicle is converted into as it's braking? Just having a look at the chat now to see who'd like to give me an answer to that. So where does the energy of a moving vehicle end up? And where does it go? And thank you there. You've got some advice in the chat there also as to how you can get the app. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, so the energy of a moving vehicle is going to go into heat in the brakes. And, um, and that's quite a large amount of energy, of course, if you think about the weight of a vehicle, the mass of a vehicle and changes when you bring water to boil in a kettle. And we think about the, the main ways that energy is transferred, which is by heating, by doing work on something, hi Ali, and by doing work when a current flows in a wire. So electrical current is a very useful way of transferring energy. And then this is the law of conservation and dissipation of energy here. We'll talk about that a bit more in a minute. So that's the AQA spec. The Edexcel spec is very much the same. Um, just spending a little bit more time on these this week. I didn't spend so much time last week on it, but I think when you're revising, it's really useful to have the spec to hand because you can really double check what you're doing in the book. And you can really just tick things off really when you're confident about them. And you, you also know where to look to find exam questions to practice. So you can see how similar the Edexcel spec is anyway. In point 0.3.5 here, these are all the same things we just talked about for AQA. And um, it's including energy transfer diagrams, which we're not going to do specifically today. And again, we're talking about here that the main ways that energy of the system can be changed by a force acting or doing work, electrical energy transfer by a current, and in heating. Um, Mohammed, um, you've just asked me if I could please explain introduction. Um, what do you mean there? If you could just add a bit to that, I'll come back to your comment. If you could just explain to me what you would like me to say again. Uh, I'm quite happy to answer your question. Okay, so that's the Edexcel spec. And the last spec I'm gonna look at is the OCR spec. And again, we're looking at how this is slightly uh, briefer. We're looking at the energy changes in an object being projected upwards. 
and an obstacle being accelerated by constant force and, and what's happening when you bring water to a boil. These are the kinds of things you're expected to be able to explain in terms of energy transfers. Right, Mohammed, um, the basic points. So we're going to be talking about energy transfers in systems and how we can describe them. We're going to be talking about um, the law of conservation of energy and I'm not going to be covering energy transfer diagrams. Um, they're the main, the main points of what we're doing today. And it'll become clear as I start the main content in just a moment. All right. OK, so just thinking back, if you were online last week and you um, went through the uh, PowerPoint perhaps afterwards and we're listening to what I was describing, we talked about systems. Um, what is a system? Um, uh, what do we really know about a system? Um, if you want to put some some answers in the chat, feel free. Tell me what you know about systems. No problem, Mohammed. So in physics, what are we talking about when we're talking about a system? Thank you, Dee. So excellent start. So Dee has suggested that a system, uh, yeah, it could be an object. Um, it could be a system of one item, um, or it could be a group of objects. Uh, and, and they're the objects that we're considering. So yes, thank you, Amy. They're interacting. So there are interactions between them. And those interactions bring about something else. Um, so when when objects in the system interact, or when something external interacts with that system, what what generally is is what's being transferred? Brilliant. Thank you, Dee. Thank you, Amy. Yeah. So energy is being transferred. Um, and thank you, Max Suda as well. Thank you, Evan. That, and that could be, um, it could be into, out of the system, uh, or it could be between objects within the system. So if we just think about the, the two examples that we've got on the screen there, we've got the kettle, first of all. Um, what's the um, energy input to the kettle? So how are, we, how are we transferring energy into the system that is the kettle? Think about, <clears throat> think about a really useful form of energy, something that's very handy because it's very easy to, to transmit or transfer from one place to another. Uh, Dee's um, said electrical. Evan's given me a nice summary there of the three main types of energy. Thank you, Eliana. Electrical again, great. So uh, for our kettle, we've got electrical energy in. And then, yes, that's quite correct, Mohammed Maxuda, that's being transferred into heat. So we've got heat energy out. We've also got other energy coming out, haven't we? What um, other kind? Oh, someone said chemical there, Aliana. Um, uh, there's no chemical energy in the kettle system there. Um, we're adding internal energy to the water, but that's a physical property of the water rather than a chemical change. So by putting electrical energy in and heating the water, we're changing its internal energy, but we're not changing it chemically. So there's no chemical energy change, but there's electrical energy in, there's heat energy being um, outputted by, by warming the water. What's the um, other form of energy that a kettle would pr produce as an output? Or transfer from its electrical energy input? Yeah. 
Brilliant. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, sound. Um, sound's going to be the predominant one. So you're going to hear the kettle boiling. Um, actually, when, when water boils, it, it, the bubbles, of course, um, move around in the, in the hot water and those bubbles then for, therefore have kinetic energy. And um, when they burst, they make sound. So that bubbling sound, that, that noise from the kettle is a wasted energy. So um, it's the kinetic energy of, of, of bubbles, partly, um, that's making that noise. So there's a few wasted energies, you could say, but it's getting a bit nitpicking to say kinetic energy of bubbles, but certainly sound. So the useful output, the wasted output is sound. Um, somebody's mentioning a battery. There could well be a battery if it was a if it was a caravan or um, somewhere mobile or a car, one of those things you plug in to heat water. Yeah, could be a battery powered kettle. Kettles require quite a lot of power to heat water. So no more often than not, they're not battery powered. Okay, the aircraft, what's the energy that is the source of the energy for the aircraft? Where, where's the energy coming from for a, a jet plane? I think I've covered kinetic, haven't I? Caribou and Evan, if there's anything more you want on that to say. Thank you, Amy, yeah, chemical. So we've got chemical energy in the fuel, in the kerosene the fuel that aircraft burn and then what's that being transformed into or transferred into mostly for an aircraft so the fuel is the energy resource carabo um the energy type in the fuel is chemical so just to get the definition correct there so you know the fuel is the resource and the energy type is chemical. And then the two kinds of energy being gained, I think Aliana and Matsud have come up with them there. So you've got kinetic energy primarily. And the kinetic energy of the aircraft moving it forwards um, allows the aircraft to gain gravitational potential energy, which I'm gonna to abbreviate to GPE, gravitational potential energy, uh, often seen as capital E little p there. And of course, that's equal to mg times the change in height, which we covered last time. Um, chemical to heat, kinetics, and um, yeah, um, the heating thing's interesting. Heat's definitely a waste energy, Evan. Um, in a jet engine, it's the rapid expansion of the um, heated and burning uh, fuel oil that causes the gases to move really, really fast. So you've got kinetic energy in the gases, spinning the turbine, making it spin round, yeah. Um, but don't, don't forget that for GCSE level, um, it's nice to think about all the details because it gives you a real context and a deep understanding, but you don't need to be able to describe every single little thing that's going on. Um, for an aircraft chemical to kinetic to gravitational energy would be perfectly good enough. Right. Um, any more questions on this slide before I move on? Just give you a moment. I think probably we've covered everything we need to on that. Mechanical energy converted. Uh, mechanical energy tends to be um, kinetic on the whole, Mohammed. Um, I think uh, mechanical energy is certainly not a phrase you, you would use in the GCSE exam. So avoid using that phrase. Um, I don't think there's anything inherently very wrong with it, but it's, a, it's perhaps a bit, it is a bit too vague for the examiners. So stick with the uh, 10 types of energy we discussed last time. Okay, so transferring energy. So main ways of transferring energy. Um, let's have a look at this one then. So there are three main methods of transferring energy in a system. And there's a picture there of a pan on a hob. So what, what's going on there? What are we doing there? And while I wait for some answers, I'm just looking at the chat. Um, so what is gravitational potential energy, Mohammed has asked. Um, so my main question is what's happening in these three examples of transferring energy? And I will come back to them. In the meantime, uh, gravitational potential energy, Mohammed, and the potential energy something has due to it being lifted up above the surface of a large mass like a planet, is equal to the mass of the object times the gravitational field strength times the change in height above the surface of the planet. Um, so I'm just gonna pop back to the current slide and we'll discuss the first one. So here then, this one here, we've got, um, yeah, thank you, Matt Suda. We've got heating going on. We've got heat energy here. That's the main, a main way, a main way of transferring energy, very often used in many industries and power production itself. So heat energy is a good source of energy which can be transferred into other forms. Um, so it, in this case, we've got, um, it, it looks like an electrical hob, but it, so it could be electrical current so it could be 
electrical current going to heat. Um, or it could be uh, chemical energy and gas. Through burning, being transferred into heat if it was a gas, um, a gas ring there. Okay, um, convection is a way of heat transfer. Um, yeah, that would be convection occurring in a liquid or any fluid. So fluids include liquids and gases. And if you heat them, yeah, you get convection currents, which helps to move the heat energy around within the fluid. Okay, conduction, convection, radiation are the three kinds of heat transfer there. We're talking about um, main methods of transfer of energy rather than just specific ways that heat energy can move around today. But you're not wrong in saying that those are conduction, convection and radiation. So this, the second one here, the second picture is a picture of someone lifting up a, a box. Um, what is that person doing in, in terms of the physics of that? How is that person transferring energy? What are they doing? I'm going to use an odd word. I'm going to say, what are they doing on the box? Because that's kind of pushing you towards the phrase that you need to know. Um, that I'm seeing a lot of things like kinetic. Well, if they're moving it, yeah, yeah, they, they've got to they've got to give you kinetic energy. But in moving it, what are they doing on it? It's something which I believe we spoke about last week. You're getting the idea of the transfers. Give you another moment. So if you apply a, a force to an object and you apply that force to move an object through a certain distance, what would you say you were doing on that object? If you apply a force to an object, like my stylus here, and I'm moving it along or I'm lifting it up, what am I doing on that object? I'm certainly gaining, I'm giving it, I'm getting an L. <laughs> Some of you are remembering this brilliant. Yeah, it is gaining GPE and yeah, I'm giving it kinetic to move it. Musab has it though, I'm doing work on it. So thank you, everyone's saying it now. Amy, Evan, Eliana, great humor, brilliant. Mohammed, yeah, it's gaining potential energy. So doing work on a system means adding energy to it by applying a force to it and moving things around. So uh, doing work is another major form of transfer of energy. So if you do work on something, you are transferring energy. Um, and in this case, we are doing work against gravity. Work against gravity here in order to lift that up. So yeah, it is gaining, it's gaining gravitational potential energy. Yeah, brilliant, gaining GPE. Good. <clears throat> and the last type there, so we're looking at the bottom picture there. Um, what's the form of energy transfer that that picture is depicting there? Thank you, Amy. Yeah, thank you, Huma. Brilliant. So this is uh, electrical energy. Uh, through the flow of current. So electrical energy by the flow of current, which is the flow of electrons in a conductor, isn't it? So those electrons moving through a conductor are carrying energy and that energy can be really easily transferred and transformed into other useful types of energy, which is why electricity is so widely used now and um, predominant form of energy for, for pretty much everything now. So this is uh, transferred through cables, um, energy transfer by electrons in the cable. I'm going to say in the current, because which that's what's in the cable. Okay, yeah, people used to heat their house by burning gas and, and little lights on the wall. Um, and you can imagine why electrical lights have become much more common than burning gas. A lot safer, and it takes the pollution away from the point of use. Uh, all important is how we create it, of course. Okay, are we okay with the three methods of energy transfer there? I'm going to move on. We're okay there. Good. So um, there's an energy transfer example here now. Um, and if anyone could tell me what this system represents, first of all, that'd be brilliant. Have a, a stare at that diagram. And if you could tell me what it is, that would be great. A 
boiler, yeah, yeah, it's a form of boiler. It's a bit more than a boiler. Um, boiler's this bit here, power station. Thank you, Evan. Yeah, thank you, Gimbo. Though that's great. So this is what we call a conventional power station. Um, um, conventional power station. Yeah, perhaps using coal, oil, gas. Um, could be biofuels, but it's burning a fuel essentially, yeah. as opposed to a nuclear power station, which is similar, except the source of heat is different. So um, what's happening um, at number one? So number one refers to what's going on here where I'm drawing the arrows. If someone could tell me what's going on at point one in the diagram, we've got water in this tank here that is uh, coming into the system and something is happening here. What's going on here? Yeah, we've got a, um, an input of heat. So there's a fuel being burned. Yeah, great. So we've got coal, which means chemical is being transferred to heat in the water. Excuse me for being lazy and writing H2O there. It's a bit quicker. So yeah, the burning fuel is heating the water and uh, it's heating the water to make it turn into steam. Um, and the steam flows through the system at very high pressure. So it's, pressure, it's pressurized steam, it's hotter than 100 degrees. Uh, what's, the, um, what's the item number two? What's, the, what's, this, um, what's this a picture of here? So we've got chemical to thermal energy, which is transferred into the water, turning it to steam. And then point number two, we're not quite at that yet, Evan, um, that bit's to come. Um, but number two and number three together are what generates electricity. Brilliant, thank you, Huma. That's the right answer. Um, so we've got kinetic energy in the turbine. So the steam under high pressure spins the turbine and that spinning of the turbine is what's providing the input to the generator. Um, uh, in the process, the water does condense Fatima. Yeah, um, we're not talking about that specifically here, but there is a change of well, several changes of state in the water, aren't there? Yeah, we're evaporating it and then we're cooling it and condensing it again. And that water is recycled so as to save um, wasted heat. Um, OK, um, no potential energy change here, although I suppose if you're being literal with a diagram, it doesn't feel like the water's moving up, but that's not, not, not a point we need to make on this one. So the turbine's spinning, it's got kinetic energy, and what is that kinetic energy converted to in number three? So what is what do we call number three on its own? Number three, Amy, is what the turbine is spinning. So the diagram is kind of a, a representation of it, of course, but the turbine spinning with the steam flowing through it spins the, uh, the magnets around in, in this object here, number three, this device here, um, which uh, has magnets moving within coils of wire. What do we call something that has magnets moving within co coils of wire? So ultimately, humor, yeah, we are we are converting chemical energy to electrical energy in the whole process. It's just there's several stages along the way. So we've got thermal energy to kinetic energy. And then the last thing we get is, as uh, Fabi has said, is, is electrical energy. And that's being produced in the generator and taken away by wires where it's needed. So yeah, Evan, thank you. Yeah, electromagnetic induction, movement of a magnetic field relative to a, a solenoid, which is a coil of wire, induces a potential difference. Excellent. And that's how we get the useful electrical energy out of a power station. Great. I think we've dwelled long enough on this. Any other questions, um, please feel free to pop them in the chat and I'll come back to them, but I'll move on now to the next slide. So can you just give me an indication of how clear everything has been so far? Um, so one, if you could in the chat, if things are seeming quite straightforward, two, if you're kind of all right, and uh, three, if you're thinking, what on earth, if you're really confused. So if you could just, uh, that'd be really helpful. Thank you. Brilliant. Do, do put your number. If, you know, if you're feeling confused, don't worry about it, because <laughs> I'm very happy to go back and cover anything again. Cool. It's looking like people are fairly happy there. Thank you, everyone. 
I think a few more people have joined us. Um, so just uh, if you want to just review the chat to see what we've been doing and then feel free to join in when we move on to the next, next part. Okay. Um, Callie, did you have any questions um, on anything that we've covered so far about the energy transfers in the systems we've looked at? Um, if you do, then please, please just pop them up. And Zainab as well. If you've got any questions, please pop them in the chat. And I'll keep my eye out for them. But that's really helpful, folks. Thank you for that. And uh, I'm going to move on then. Right, okay, so let's uh, do some practice exam questions. So these are some real questions or parts of questions from your GCC exams of past years. Um, here we've got the cyclist. Um, okay, I understand, Kelly. Yeah, um, confidence, I think, is something you can build up by looking at practice questions. Um, these, time, these kinds of sessions will definitely help you. I think just getting someone um, who's maybe not the teacher you're normally listening to explain something can not anything to do with the quality of teaching but just a different person's way of explaining can sometimes help but um, certainly practice um, practice questions Kelly just uh, practice going through the past exam questions because there's only so many kinds of questions they can ask and it, you quickly um, you will get it um, things will click if you do that um, so we've got some people putting up answers to this one already. So we've got the cyclist riding along the road. He's on a straight level road and they're going at a constant speed. So as the cyclist rides along, the energy store in the cyclist's body is chemical, as many of you have already stated. So we've got chemical energy in the cyclist's body. Yeah. And it's that chemical energy from our food, which is enabling our muscles to produce kinetic energy. And that chemical energy store is going to go down as you exercise, um, you're going to deplete that chemical energy store. So the second question is the speed of the cyclist is constant when the work done by the cyclist um, is, is something to, in comparison with the work done against air resistance. So if the cyclist is moving at constant speed, think about the energy transfers. What, what must the work done by the cyclist be in order to keep the cyclist going at the same speed in relation to air resistance? And there's lots of good answers there. The same as equal, equal, equal to the driving force. Yeah, driving force equals air resistance. Yep, brilliant. So it's got to be equal to, indeed. Um, what that means is, of course, that the energy that's going into that system of the cyclist on the bike is the same as the energy that's being put out. Okay, so the energy working, the force working against it, the energy um, so the work being done, which is an energy, the work being done against the air resistance has to be the same as the energy going in to move the cyclist forward. Good. So equal, equal to the work done against air resistance. Okay, moving on from there then. Um, let's have a look at this. So what type of energy transfer is going on here? So if we start with work, where do I need to draw a line between the work and its energy transfer? Where is work being done here? Okay, the boss D, football. Yeah, football being kicked. Good, so work's being done when you kick a football. You're kicking it, you're applying a force to a mass and that's uh, doing work against it. Force times distance move through it. Okay, brilliant. Current flow. Yep, a battery powered torch. So the electrons flowing in a wire, transferring electrical energy into a battery powered torch. So you've got a conversion from chemical to electrical to light and heat, and you're going on there. And then heat, brilliant, lots of people are saying it, heat's going to a fireplace. Heat is an example of a transfer of energy from a fireplace, so that's great. Okay, good. Clearly a torch gives off a bit of heat too, but when you get a question like this, you go for the biggest, most obvious answers and um, the, most, the most heat output is from the fireplace. Okay. So I shall move on from there. Similarities and differences now um, between the way um, energy is transferred in an electric heater and the way energy is transferred in an electric motor. So this is a three mark question and it wants you to state two things. So similarities and differences. So think about similarities first is probably um, the best way to approach it. It's the first um, word they want you to consider in the question. So what is similar when energy is being transferred in an electric heater 
and an electric motor. What do they both have in common? Think, um, you don't need to think about, I'm just looking at Hume's um, comment of a battery, just thinking, I don't know if it's related to this question. Do, you don't need to think about where the electricity is coming from, um, just that it is, uh, thank you, Dee, they both start with a transfer of electrical energy. Um, the boss, you're going back a little bit too far in the chain. Let's just think about electrical energy here. So yeah, so they both have their energy supplied as electrical energy. So both are supplied oops, electrical energy. So there's a similarity. They both have an electric current flowing into them, an electric current, um, MISPA. A convection current is referring to the motion of particles in the fluid when they're being heated. So you would call this an electrical current, an electric current. That's the way the electrical energy is being supplied. And then let's think about the differences now then. So think about what does each of those devices um, output? What's the useful output of an electric heater? While I'm waiting for some comments on that, um, convection, it's outside the scope of this um, session. Um, I have explained a few times, but it's a way of heat transfer in a fluid. Um, that should get you on the right path when you have a look at that on uh, one of any revision sources or, or the SAP Revise website, um, if you look that up there. So yeah, thank you, Evan. And thank you, Dee and the boss, Eliana. Brilliant. Okay, so the heater outputs thermal energy. And the motor outputs kinetic energy. Brilliant. So there you go, you've answered the question with three marks there. It's um, always useful to underline key terms in a, in a question. And um, if there's a word that says um, describe or explain or state, bear in mind what they, they, that does change how you're going to answer the question. Here it just says outline. So very simple, simple answers needed. Um, okay. Yeah, Amy, um, types of heat transfer definitely in there. Uh, convection, conduction, radiation. So yeah, do, do have a look at it. Okay, pressing on then. So, oops, let's pass that. So the second part then, um, just looking at our time, we seem to be doing well for time, conservation and dissipation of energy. It's fine to forget stuff, <laughs> the boss. It's fine to forget stuff, it does happen. And um, GCSE covers, covers such a huge breadth of content. You do forget stuff. And sometimes you end up kicking yourself because you think what you've forgotten, you shouldn't have forgotten, but it, it happens. Don't worry about it. You can you can pick these things up again. Right, okay. So conservation and dissipation of energy. So the principle of conservation of energy states what? I think some of you will be able to state this for me. Um, what is the principle of conservation of energy? What, what can we say about energy that is a, uh, we think a universal law? Um, really important that you um, are able to state this because it could be could be a mark in an exam. So what is the principle of conservation of energy? So we've got a couple of people having a go there. We've got Ms. Bell saying energy can be formed. I'm going to wait till we get some more answers up. Um, oh, I think I know what you meant. Yeah, I think you've made a typo, haven't you, Ms. Bell? I think you've got it. You've hit the nail on the head there, I believe. And the boss energy cannot be created nor destroyed, but can be transferred between different energy stores. Excellent. Fabiha, Eliana, all good. All good, yeah. And good humor as well. Yeah, you completed that. So yeah, the principle of conservation of energy states that energy can be neither created or destroyed, just transferred or transformed is a better word, just transformed from one form to another. <clears throat> so there is a universal law of conservation of energy, really important. You can't create energy. 
you, it's not correct to say a plant makes its own energy, doesn't transfers energy from the sun and it makes its own food, but it doesn't make its own energy. And I've had teachers say that, <laughs> but it's not right to say that. Um, energy can't be made and it can't be destroyed. You can simply take one form of it, one store of it and turn it into another kind. So energy is dissipated and dissipated is a really good word to use if you're answering a question on conservation of energy and you're being asked where does the unuseful energy go? Where does the non-useful energy go? Um, if, if energy is dissipated, where is it going? So you've got a system, you've got an object or a group of objects, and there's some non-useful energy being transformed. Um, and where is that energy going? Pretty much all the time. What would you say? Where would you say the energy is going? Thank you, Eliana. Brilliant. Yep. It's dissipated if it goes into the surroundings. Um, and the boss, if some of the energy is not transferred into useful energy stores, it's wasted. Yeah, you can refer it to wasted energy. Um, <clears throat> and occasionally people use the word lost. I don't like the, the word lost because it's kind of almost saying you've, you, it's disappeared. And we've just said we can't do that. You can't make energy disappear. Um, friction can create a wasted form of energy, D. Yeah, when surfaces rub together. So one of the wasted forms of energy in a car engine is going to be friction because of surfaces moving against each other. Um, when energy is dissipated, it goes into the surroundings and transforms into a non-useful form. Into a non-useful form of energy, which is often heat and can be sound. And sometimes an exam question will try and catch you out on that. Quite frequently, the answer to what is the wasted energy type is heat. But I have seen some questions come up now where the exam board, where well, you need to read the question really carefully because they've said, except for heat, what is the non-useful energy type? And so you then need to think about other things. So often it's sound if it's not heat. Um, okay, so energy is dissipated. It goes into the surroundings and transformed into a non-useful type. I'm gonna say there, type or form. So what's going on in this picture? Um, we're heating a fuel. What's the waste energy from heating a fuel for burning? From burning a fuel here, what's the uh, what's the waste energy there? Um, yeah, there will be sound. There will be sound. There's a bigger waste energy, but um, thank you, Amy. Yeah, Zainab is quite correct in saying sound. Amy is very correct in saying heat. They're your two main forms, and heat's going to be the much bigger one, but you're definitely going to get sound from a furnace, yeah. Thermal or heat, both good words, both fine. Um, thermal energy, heat energy, uh, interchangeable. Um, so when we're talking about the um, transfer of the steam, how, how is energy going to be lost from these pipes? I think we're kind of saying the same thing here. Um, Heat is needed, yeah, but some heat, the boss, some heat is lost through the body of the furnace and it's going into the surroundings. In a perfect furnace, um, in an ideal furnace, all the heat would go into the water. But um, however good the insulation might be, you get some heat lost into the surround, using that word. You get some heat dissipated into the surroundings. You also get light, yeah, brilliant. Yeah, when, when you burn things, you get light. That's a good one. You get heat coming off the pipes. Um, What's going to happen inside? Um, thank you for joining us, Evan. Um, sorry, you've got to go before we finish. No worries. You can download the slides and you can see the whole um, hour um, through the SnapRevise YouTube channel. Thank you. Um, so in the turbine itself, what's causing energy to be dissipated into the surroundings from the turbine? What kinds of energy is the turbine going to um, produce? which are not useful. Okay, good. So, yeah, thank you. We're going to get heat energy again caused by friction in the bearings and things like that. Um, we're also going to get uh, noise. So we're going to get sound energy coming off there as well. And then I think we'll we'll press on the generator here for the same reason the generator's got bearings in it. So you're gonna get heat due to friction. 
again in the generator. So again, you might have a question which gives you a system and says, just state, no, state two or three different ways that heat is dissipated to the surroundings. And you can just think about it for a moment and think of all the kinds of wasted energy. And usually you come down to sound, heat and light. Okay, so let's move on from there. Um, conservation of energy. Let's look at uh, an example here. So uh, a half kilogram ball is thrown upwards at a speed of eight meters per second. Um, calculate the initial kinetic energy of the ball. So what's the formula that we're going to use to calculate the kinetic energy of something moving? What are we going to use to calculate that? I'm going to start it off, but I'm going to ask see if you can come up with it in the chat. So EK, the kinetic energy, is equal to... Thank you, the boss. Brilliant. Half mv squared. So... One half or 0 0.5 times the mass of the ball times the velocity of the ball squared. So that's going to be a half times 0 0.5 times 8 squared, which is 64, if you work it out. And I see people have done that and they've got the right answer there coming up from Aliana, the boss, and Fatima. Thank you. Um, so the answer there is 16 joules of energy. So the kinetic energy given to the ball when you throw it up is 16 joules. Now, the question then asks, given the ball only reaches a height of two metres from the point where it was thrown, calculate the amount of energy that is dissipated as it reaches this height. Now, you've got to think about this question. It's asking for energy that's been dissipated. So you've got to understand what that means. That word dissipated, or those words dissipated energy, mean energy lost to the surroundings. So... I know some of you are going to say it's going to be 16 joules. Now, it would be 16 joules, humor if we were in an airless room um, and I was throwing this ball whilst gasping for breath and breathing or my heart taking its last beat. We, we're not. So you've got to think about where's the energy going to go. Um, let's look at the energy that the ball is going to gain if it goes up two metres to start with. So the potential energy, the, the gravitational potential energy, is going to be equal to the mass times gravitational field strength times the change in height. So that's going to be 0 0.5 times, we'll take gravity to be 10, which is often the case, and you will be told in the question. And the change in height is 2. So that equals, as some of you are now saying in the chat, that equals 10 joules. So the, the ball has only gained 10 joules of gravitational potential energy, but we put 16 joules in when we threw it up. So the difference is that between 10 and 16. Brilliant, some of you are saying it. Not sure where the point two came from, the boss, but you're, you're almost there. Um, thank you, Fabiha. And, oh, OK, yeah, no, no problem. You would use the value for gravity that you get given in the paper or in the question and uh, or in the data and formula sheet in the case available. So the difference in energy is going to be equal to the kinetic energy minus the gravitational potential energy, which is going to be six joules. And that has been dissipated as what? What's that turned into? The ball's gone up in the air. It didn't gain the height it, you would think it might because it didn't, didn't lose all its kinetic energy to, to gain in height and GPE. So where's the energy gone? What's, what type of energy has that been transformed into? What, not, what less useful form of energy? So be careful, air resistance isn't a form of energy, um, Aliana. It's the cause of the energy dissipation, but it's not the form of energy. So what's the form of energy that has been transferred to the surroundings? And I can see someone, the boss has now said heat energy, friction. So air resistance is caused by air molecules striking um, the surface of something moving through the, the air. So it's going to be heat. Yeah, it could be a bit of sound, but the, the biggest thing is going to be heat. I'm must just asking the question. This question doesn't ask you, but you might get a question that does. So that, that dissipated energy is mostly dissipated as heat into the air due to friction because of air resistance. OK, and the GPE we end up with is what didn't get transformed into non-useful form. Good. Um, so pressing on from there, um, some other examples. What are the lost energy types from a kettle? So what are we losing from a kettle? Talked about this a little bit earlier, didn't we? So we could probably do this quite quite quickly. Yeah, we're going to get heat lost. We're going to get heat um, into the air and into the kettle itself. 
How else are we going to lose it? Yeah, we're going to get sound. Uh, we might get some light as well. Yeah, very happy with those answers. Yeah, light, arguably useful. Some of the kettles you get light up, don't they? Not particularly helpful, um, but they look pretty. Um, so in a car, a moving car, where are the energy losses? What, what's the dissipated energy from a car? We're going to get heat from the engine, which is not useful, especially in the summer when you don't want to heat the cabin of the car. All that heat energy you just need to get rid of. Um, Thank you for being here. Thank you for joining us. And you've been very welcome. I hope to see you again. Thank you. We've got so heat from the engine. We've got sound there. Yep, certainly sound from the engine. Um, what else have we got there from the car? Let's have a think. What about the kind of um, yeah, what's the, what's the kind of energy that we're losing where the tyres meet the road? Yeah, we've got, um, yeah, there might be some, um, I'm not sure about light. I, actually, I'm, I'm going to leave light out, Taz, just because I think it, it's not inherently a wasted form of energy. Uh, it's probably something you need if you've turned on lights in the car. But you're going to have friction because the car is doing work against um, the air resistance. And so you're going to have heat energy due to the friction um, doing work against air resistance. Or work against uh, resistive forces. So that's air resistance and friction between the tyres and the road. Uh, no, it's not an energy, correct. I meant to say here that friction is giving rise to heat energy. Um, so that's quite correct, Aniana. Friction's not an energy. Friction is a force. Uh, but when friction occurs, then you get heat energy produced. So it's, uh, it's giving rise to heat energy. So we're heat from the engine, heat from friction. And um, work against air resistive forces is going to be uh, a type of friction, yeah, Ms. Bar. yeah. <clears throat> okay, how are we feeling at this point? Um, we've got about uh, eight minutes left. I've got some exam questions I'd like to go through. So do you think that what we've done in the second part is relatively straightforward, all right? Or are you confused? Let's have a look at your ones, twos and threes again, please. Thank you very much. Brilliant, keep them coming in. Thank you. We've got some people loitering there. No, that's great. No, that's really heartening to see. That's brilliant. Um, and if you're not a one, don't worry. Just confidence will come from practicing this. Um, so again, have a look, download the slides, have a go at the questions again. Brilliant. So I'm seeing ones at the moment. Again, like I say, if you're not, if you're not so sure, if you don't want to say, have a look at the slides, go through them again. And of course, if you want to join the Snap Revised Tutoring Programme, and then you can get some one-to-one -one support. Fantastic. So let's have a look at another couple of questions. Um, there's a kettle there. Uh, why is the total energy input of a kettle higher than the energy used to heat the water? So why are we putting more energy in than the water has after you've heated it up? Where's that energy going? Is it going into box one, two or three? I'm going to ask you now to give me another one, two or three. Uh, where's that energy going? Or you can give me a B if you want to be awkward. B. Yes, fine. A, B, or C, or one, two, or three. Where's it going? Is it going into? Is it being absorbed? Is that is that energy being absorbed from the surroundings? Is energy being used to heat the kettle? Is the kettle more than hundred percent efficient? Think about the question. Why is the total energy going in higher than the energy going into the water? Some of you are saying one, and that's interesting, energy absorbed from the surroundings. It's not right. Um, for that to be correct, the surroundings would have to be hotter than the water in the kettle for heat to move into the water. So you'd have to have a room above 100 degrees. Um, so there'd be situations where that might be true. Uh, there'd be engineering situations where that might be a problem. But in this case, um, most of you are saying two, I think, now. And that's the correct answer. So um, energy is being used to heat the kettle. OK, energy will move in a heat energy will move from an area where it's hotter to an area where it's cooler until equilibrium is reached. So it's going to be transferred. But in this case, it's going uh, from the electrical energy into the body of the kettle. So number two. 
Um, here we have a further question. We've got two ways of heating water. We're just going to talk about the kettle here on the left-hand side. It's supplied with, this is a nice, I hope, straightforward one. Let's see. Um, you're putting in two and a half thousand joules of energy. The water gains 2,200 joules of energy. Calculate the amount of energy wasted in a second. So you, if you look at the question, it says each second. So you can almost disregard that last point. Um, what is the energy wasted per second if it's two and a half in per second and 2,200 out? Yeah, we can, I can see 300 coming up there. And that is the correct answer. Brilliant, 300 joules. Excellent. So the exam board will throw some of those in as well for you. And uh, just read the question carefully and then you get the maths right. Okay, and here's a heater heating a garage. Um, if that heater's on in a cold garage, why does the heater warm up and then stay at constant temperature? What is the condition when that heater is at constant temperature? So what conditions must be met? Got energy, electrical energy going in, heat energy coming out. For that temperature of the heater to be constant, what can you say about the energy flow? Think about energy dissipation and energy supply. If the overall temperature of the heat is staying the same, yeah, we've got to assume energy flow is constant. Um, yeah, thank you, Ava. I think that does sum it up. Um, energy gain equals energy loss. The energy transferred equals the energy lost. Yeah, so the electrical energy in, is equal to the heat energy transferred out, plus, of course, that little bit of light energy too. Thank you, Amy. No problem at all. Hope you join us again next week. Okay, so yeah, for it to be a constant temperature, the electrical energy in must equal the um, energy output, and that's been dissipated into the surroundings. The rate of energy supply is equal to the rate of energy dissipation. Okay, I'm going to move past this question simply because I just want to summarize now because we are right at the end of our time. And so you should now be able to understand different ways that energy can be transferred in a system, a system being uh, one object or a group of objects interacting. Uh, number two, we were hoping, I uh, hope you've got this, the principle of energy conservation, uh, that you can state that energy can be neither created nor destroyed, just transformed from one form to another. And lastly, <clears throat> to be able to um, draw a diagram to show much energy is dissipated in a transfer. Um, well, to be able to look at a system and to be able to label that diagram showing where the energy is being dissipated. So I hope that they are things that we've covered. And I'm now gonna ask you if you've got any final questions before I do a little bit more admin and just a few reminders for you. So any more questions about what I've covered for you today? <coughs> uh, Georgia is a, a colleague of mine and a person who assists with how we get these live streams up and running. Anything about the energy transfer topic? Any questions at all? Um, okay. That's fine. I don't think, um, if you do come up with anything in the next minute or so, please do just pop it in the chat. Um, yeah, I'm called David. <laughs> That's uh, on the front of my slides. Okay, so YouTube GCSE classes. Um, physics will continue on a Monday, so same time next week. And there will be another session. I'll be here back here on Monday at 5.30. Biology on a Tuesday, maths on a Wednesday, and chemistry on a Thursday. And um, thank you. Thank you very much. And um, if you want to be reminded, then just set a reminder on YouTube to bring you back to that session. And don't forget, if you would like uh, an academic year's worth of free GCSE tutoring, then enter the competition as we have 10 accounts to give away. And with that, I will say goodbye to you all. And thank you again for, for being here. And I look forward to seeing you next week.